Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really, a disloyal person. This, this, this. is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Monday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe at Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there, join the militia. And it is Independence Eve. And um, we decided to come here because we both had some free time and talk about some of the goings-on. In the Syracuse world, uh, some football recruiting, some Bayheim's Army, and of course, we'll wrap it up with Le Quint Allen. And I'm going to try to do a Twitter Spaces, which is, I don't know. We'll see if it works. I've never done it before, but I know we can, Joe. So we can go live on Twitter with audio, and people, I think, can get on and chat and whatnot. So hmm. we'll try that. Uh, thanks to uh, what, at NS Scum, if I remember that correctly, uh, he gave us a couple ideas for fan interaction stuff, and that was one of them. That seems like the easiest, so we'll try it. I hope everybody's summer is going well so far, and I know mine is. Once the weather finally broke down in the southeast, I think it just broke my 90 for the first time. I think it was. Friday. No. Saturday. It's the first time I hit 90 in Virginia all year so far. So, long overdue. If you know me, I like it hot. I like it hot. That's why I don't live in Syracuse anymore. Yeah. You like it hot. You enjoy the summer. I and enjoy the summer. I do. <clears throat> and I uh, don't have any sports or really anything. I'm bored as hell. I, uh, so, well, I would, I would not have the same sentiments as your summer so far, but... Uh, nonetheless, it's a different story. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not about, I, it's not about me; it's about everybody else, it, right? It, it, I can be okay. I mean, there are sports that go on in the summer. I mean, there's racing. I know, but I've done this before, dude. There's Bayheim's Army, the TBT. Yeah, there's the TBT that happens in July. Yeah, the end of July. So happening a little bit later this July than normal. I felt like it, it started really early. I thought it felt. I thought felt like it started really early last year. Did it not? I don't know. I'm like, gonna have to go back and check. But I feel like. Is it about the same? I feel like it's always around the 20, 20th. Oh, Twenty. Yeah. Not for anything. Speaking of summer sports and racing, NASCAR, whatnot. I think that 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 whole thing is taking a dive quick too. So. You know, I I don't need sports to get me through the summer just because it's the summer. But I will say this. When it is not the best weather or when you are like midday on a Sunday and there's you just want to chill and just throw something on TV, there's really nothing on other than cooking shows. <coughs> so, I mean, that's it. That's my sport in the summer, I guess. Cooking shows. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess. Look. That's just where I find myself because it, it's just there's nothing on TV. Yeah, I've done... I've done NASCAR. The problem with that is I get into it, but then right when the playoffs start, football starts, and I completely, you know, then it's Sunday, and it's like, okay, am I going to watch a playoff race, or am I going to watch football, which, you know. I mean, you could do both. And by the way, I think the second week of the season, Bills and the Raiders play, and that game is the game to win my heart, Joe, as you know. So that should be exciting. Say that again. The Bills and the Bills and the Raiders play in week two. That is the game for Sean's <laughs> oh, yeah. heart. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna throw that out there. And uh, it, who knows? Maybe it's a draw, and then we're just we're 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 just treading water. I don't know. But um, you know, as unexcited as I am about football in general, um, that's it's months away, so I don't have to worry about it. Just be weary. Be weary of what? Bills fans are ruthless. I mean, I don't care. 
And if you switch, they might blame you for the season they're about to have. <laughs> it's a win-win for me, you see? Uh, <laughs> and me. See how that, see here. how that works? Because when you don't care, you just don't care. Right? You know what I mean? It's just yeah. one of those things. All right. Well, all right. Let's get into this uh, after that. Look, I think we got 16 recruits. Joe corrected me. I thought it was 15. It's 16. We do have some four stars. Okay? The first four star that we picked up for the 2024 cl- class is um, this tight end, Jamie Tremble. And he is from Wesleyan School in Georgia. And he had offers from uh, Georgia Tech, Florida State, Mississippi State, Vanderbilt, Wake Forest, amongst others. Um, so, t- we there has been a lot of criticism about the tight end game, uh, to say the least, in Syracuse football in recent years. So, that should help. That's kind of exciting. And then, I'm just going to point out this other, Jakari Williams, four-star uh, quarterback, from also from Georgia in Macon. And he had offers from NC State, Virginia Tech, Pitt, Georgia Tech, uh, amongst others. And 6'3", 190, dual threat guy, kind of like what we got now. I mean, that's what the that's what the that's what the league's trending to, I think, for the most part. But anyway, he's going to join uh, Brendan Davis in uh, CDRW, right? So there's no easy way to say that. Um, and those and, and look, the 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 class is strong. I think we're what we're ranked what fifty second. Is that right? Fifty second. What uh, the recruiting class? The 2020, 2024 recruiting class for Syracuse. no. Currently, right now in two four seven sports, we're thirty ninth. Thirty ninth. Okay. All right. Way better. Now than that thought. could just be f- for the sheer amount of recruits because I think that goes into it as well. But um, I, I thought it was. I do. Yeah. yeah well, of of course. Yeah. And I just don't remember the, the. I guess the thing now, and in, in what's going on this year, like you, like you said, um, thirty nine, getting uh, yeah. ja- getting Jamie Tremble and, and Jakari Williams. Although Jamie Tremble isn't a four star on two four seven, uh, he is um, a high three star on two four seven, and another oh, three on or whatever, on three. Yeah, and the other ones, yeah, he's so he's a, a guy in between the four, three and a four star. Um, but I think what makes it interesting here is <clears throat> this guy. Right now is is kind of built like a receiver, six four two oh five. So it's almost an, an Aronde Gadsden type situation, uh, and I think that that's kind of how they're looking at him to use him, um, move him around, do things like that. Um, but also, this guy's got pedigree because his brother Tommy Tremble is now in Notre the Dame. NFL. He's in the NFL um, for the Carolina Panthers. Played for Notre Dame. Um, obviously, uh, you know. Runs in a family, but he's six four two fifty. So uh, he's proven that um, that he can put on weight. So if, if Jamie Trumbull can put on weight, then you never know. We might be able to get some type of traditional um, tight end type of situation, or you know maybe he is fast enough to maybe eventually turn into a, a, a receiver or one of those kind of you know flex tight end receiver type guys like uh, like Aranda Gasson. Um, and yeah, Jakari Williams coming in as according to two four seven sports, you know, twentieth, um, you know, top twenty quarterback. And you you watch you watch the tape, and he uh, he's athletic, but again, um, kind of reminded me a little bit of watching Lenore Sellers um, video last year, where he can um, get out of the pocket, but he doesn't just go straight to run. You know, he keeps his eyes down the field and. Um, and he, he he makes some tough throws, so um, excited to have him in in there, especially considering you know obviously the um, the quarterback room that we have, like you said, like you spoke about. <clears throat> but um, that one quarterback that I forget his name now, um, I know we talked about it, but he's quarterback in Ohio. I think that he committed to us. He decommitted as soon as Jakari Williams uh, committed, so he was a yeah, little we- bit of a. We talked about him in I think in the last show, like we talked. Yeah, about, yeah. So yeah, so he did, he decommitted and he actually has committed to Northwestern since, um, a little bit closer to home. Um, so, yeah, I mean, kind of gets you excited, especially can you you look at last year? Last year's class didn't really get you excited at all. I think we were up in the high sixties, uh, mid sixties. So we were getting out recruited by a lot of non Power Five schools, 
and we didn't get a lot of players. We didn't offer, or not, we didn't get a lot of, we didn't use all our scholarships, right? Um, so right now we have 16 committed, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and we'll see. But those two are, you know, ranked in the top 500 by by 247 Sports, and Jakari Williams up there is um, close to the top 300 with uh, 328. So those are two of the more um, highly recruited um, or the higher recruits that we've had in, in quite some time. Yeah, does it give you a, a little bit of hope for the future? Or, do, I mean, do you think, you know, the one thing about recruits, especially this day and age, I mean, it's always great right now, but how quickly things can change. And with 16 recruits, I mean, some of these guys got to be, you know, it's one of those things where we go through this and, we, you know, a lot of people get really excited about recruiting efforts and stuff. And I, and I, and I can in, appreciate the effort and what we're bringing in um but there's always that skepticism yeah. of you know I'm, I'm a cynic and so you know you get guys like this and it's been a while i mean what was the the last four star what was it tommy devito hold on a second is that right no there was another yeah. one was it yeah i'm pretty sure it was tommy devito yeah. okay all right well okay so great example i mean it's just one of those things like I love the idea of this and I hope that, you know, and, and Babers, we know that he is just a, um, he is a charismatic guy and, you know, he's out there doing it and he's been, uh, as far as I remember in recent history, he's been on the trail recruiting hard, harder than I remember, you know, in the past. But with that said, it's one of those things. I don't know when to get to get excited. That's that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, when you got the the defense that we've been running, and you got the defense of you know players that we've had and everything, you know, you look at there's there's some things to be excited about that you haven't seen in a little while. I mean, defense alignment, their third best um, according to two four seven sports, third highest rated. David McMorris, uh, defense alignment six two two fifty five. I mean, we haven't had. A size like you know, I know 255 doesn't sound big right now, but he's not going to be there till 2024. And a lot of our normal freshmen, you know, they, they haven't had that type of size coming in. You know what I mean? You look at Tristan Graham, 6'3", 245, an edge rusher. You know, is he a defensive end? Is he a linebacker? We play that kind of weird. You know, are we going to have a bunch of different? End? You know, we got the, the the rover. We got. You know, five defensive backs. We have those, you know, tweeners between are you a safety or are you a, uh, a linebacker and are you a linebacker or are you defensive end and they move people around. Uh, the other guy, Jaden Brown from Don Bosco Prep, you know, you bring up Tommy DeVito, that's his old alumni, but he linebacker 6'3", 220. I mean, that's that's big, good size. You know, we get uh, from Denton, Texas, we have Willie Goodacre, an inside offensive lineman. He's 6'4", 6'5", ish. He's 315. So uh, when you go down the line and you start looking at some of these guys, um, some of these guys, uh, the size of some of these guys, you know, the last commit we got, Matthew Stenbroten, um, he's the most recent commit out of Wisconsin, um, top 15 player out of that, uh, that state. And he's a linebacker, 6'4", 225. So when you're really looking at it, you're looking at we're getting guys that seem to be in a little bit more, you know, better situation as far as size and, and, and physicality and, and that's uh, probably has to do with a little bit of their higher rankings so it does give me something something to to be excited about especially you know with all the coaches that we lost last year and then kind of the lower one of Dino Baber's worst recruiting classes um, last year as well so uh, definitely definitely uh, one of those things and um I know also come July 6th, what is it, it's Thursday, July 6th, uh, uh, New Jersey four-star Willie Love is set to uh, decide. And there's a lot of buzz saying that he's picking between Syracuse and Rutgers. But he's got – he's basically picking between Syracuse, Maryland, Rutgers, Penn State, Pittsburgh, Texas A&M, and West Virginia. So – and he is a um, six foot two, 200-pound, one of those, you know, linebacker, safety-type guys. So – that's why they think that he um, that he might that Syracuse might be on top um, because of that situation. So look out for that on Thursday. That would be our seventeenth uh, commit, and he would be our seventh 
commit uh, player from the state of New Jersey. So that's another thing to be excited about. It looks like we're trying to trying to get back New Jersey from Rutgers. Lenore Sellers was the other one I was thinking of. He was a four star, was he not? I think he was and, and, getting there, but then he com- uh, and, decommitted right and switched to South Carolina. Yeah. 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 So. Um, so, anyways, yeah. I mean, it looks good. I'm, I'm, I'm. It's exciting, and you know, you wonder how all this is going to come together. Um, I'm kind of someone who's more focused on the year. I mean, we're a year over a year away from all that. Yeah. I'm gonna have to. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those guys that's going to have to go back through and look and re- refresh myself with all these names and positions and stuff. I mean, obviously. Jakari Williams and um, Jamie Tremble are two names that would be hard to forget because there was a lot of buzz about that, and right. it's pretty exciting. But um, anyway, okay, it's tough, dude. It's tough because I, I get where you come from all the time. You know, let's see if they get there, right? But it's just it's really really difficult because when you look at it, um, you know, you got the season that starts here shortly, right? Yeah, I mean that that's kind of. That's what's weird about basketball and recruiting is a little bit different than football, and there's it's, a lot more players in football, right? Right. So the way, the, a, the it, way the football works, I mean, early signing period for 2024 is this December, and then February is signing day, right? So, like, I mean, for the most part, is it February or is it April? The, no, I think it's February. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, most of the time, the the real, real good players – that are going to be going D1 and stuff like that. I mean, they're committed to the school that they're going to, or at least have some type of verbal commit before they even go into their senior season of high school. So like during the summer, that's when they're doing their official visits. That's when they're doing the camps and inviting people in and finding diamonds in the rough people that might be not play against, you know, best competition, but can come in and prove his skills. So um, that's just the way it's set up is the most important time of football um, recruiting is in the summer before the season, before they're even going to be there. So that's what's so difficult about it is because bec- this is one of the most important times this summer for next year and their recruiting class coming in. And we have to kind of talk about it before this year, the season that they're not even going to be there, right? Right. But that's there's nothing we can do about it because there's people that sign and commit early signing day December before our bowl game. Before, before we even play a bowl game, if we're in a bowl game, we have most of our commits for the next season. So it's, 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 it's just some of it's overloaded, and some of this stuff is trying to find the diamond in the rough. So you, you, overload, it's, it's, you overload your roster, obviously, and, and just kind of until guys get there, see who actually gets there and see what works. And I get it. It's just all, there's a lot on a roster. There's a lot of names that we're not even going to ever hear again. Well, yeah, and that's the thing, right? Is you have these guys. I mean, that's what happened with, sadly, in Lenore Sellers, right? We don't know if it was Robert and I leaving, or was it that he actually finally got that, you know, that uh, that scholarship offer from South Carolina and decided to go there, right? Same thing with, with these guys, you know, Jakari Williams and Jamie Trumbull. They're from Georgia. You know, um, are they waiting for bulldogs? <laughs> but that's the thing, right? They're yeah. going to be able to go into their senior year. Okay, they're they are verbally committed to a school in the ACC where they're going to go in and possibly have a really good chance to play early, and if they start to kill it in their senior year and actually, you know, obviously yeah, people and- start people start committing, and then the bigger schools start filling in the gaps of what they didn't get. Then, and don't get me wrong, hey. some of these guys understand that they're the second option, third option. Um, some of them care. And some of them don't, and they're just waiting well, for it. But they want to go into the season with a with a commitment, right? With a verbal commitment. Yeah, and like you said, they got a whole another year of of um, high school ball to play. And you know, when you're on the radar now, and you've committed to a D1 school or verbally committed to a D1 school, and in the in the age of NIL, when um, people are taking notice of that, and you know. Maybe this raises some eyebrows for some other teams, and there's nothing that will can stop them from going in and putting together a prettier offer. And oh yeah, and, and I mean, so if if he goes off, then that's awesome for him, and it looks great for us. But he can also say, you know what, I'm gonna stay down south, and I'm gonna play for the Bulldogs or whoever, 
And yeah. and that's the situation you're in, especially when you grab them early. But you got, I mean, a, t- a school like Syracuse has got to grab them when they can get them. Yeah, but I mean, again, I think I kind of predicted this, and I don't even know if we've just hit the, the tip of the iceberg, but you're going to have a lot of these bigger schools that are going to be getting, they're going to be taking these transfers, right? And look, Ohio State. Ohio State's not going to have a, a scholarship for, you know, uh, a college player or something like that because, um, what the hell's his name? Safety for us that just transferred there last year. Why can't I think of his name already? That's how forgettable Awful. they can be. That's the humble, I mean, because they're gone, That's right? Kind I mean, of my point. Just not- <laughs> no, not to, he, yeah. Um, who was it? Safety. He was t- Either way, Deuce Chestnut, right? I, mean, I was just talking about Willie Love, who was going to be committing on Thursday, right? He's a uh, cousin. Jahad Carter. Chestnut. Yeah, Jahad Carter. That's, that's 20 push ups after the. Yeah, by the way. 20 push ups after the. Um, uh, you're usually, not usually, you're way better with that stuff than me, first of all. Second of all, that he was a maniac. <laughs> yes. No, I understand that. This is, I mean. That, but that's, what, that's my point, though, too. It's like, okay, they're going to play the year. Okay, they're gone. All right. Now what? Next? Well, yeah. But that's the thing, right? It's like. A, like, like this Willie Love guy that's going to be, you know, um, committing on Thursday. You know, do you want to commit to a Penn State where you might not play for the first three years, right? And then maybe you get buried, I don't know. Or do you go to a Syracuse where you play in year two and then after, you know, another one or two years, you know, after your redshirt sophomore or redshirt freshman year or whatever, you're good enough to where an Ohio State or an LSU is going to, going to pick you up through the transfer portal, you know, and get a better NIL deal than you would if you were a freshman or something like that. So it's like type of risk like that. And I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't see some of these guys that normally go to bigger name schools. I mean, think about it. These big name schools, they don't got NIL money for, you know, the 15th rated, 15th, 20th rated guy in their class. You know, that's going to the transfers, the big money transfers and the five star. You know what I mean? Those guys yeah. that are in between the four and three star that, you know, they they take near the end and they're like, oh, yeah, you know, he's, we think he can turn into something. Those guys aren't getting NIL. But if those well, guys were to go to a Syracuse or to something like that, they're going to be getting NIL money because they're going to be one of the top ranked guys in that class. You go there, you play for two years, you make a little bit of money, you show yourself, show out. Now, the Alabama or the Georgia or whoever wants to take you because you're two years in and you've proven yourself. And now you're going to get even bigger NAL money. I mean, there's a way to play this um, coming out of high school where, where no matter where you're ranked, you can, you can make a little bit more money um, and put yourself in a better position, in my opinion. Yeah, the whole thing is the chess game. I mean, basically. It's always been, but it's, it's, now it's 3D chess. Yeah. But I mean, just like even in this situation, Jakari Williams, right? Jakari Williams is probably going to be able to get some NIL money coming to Syracuse, right? Yeah, you would think so. I mean, you would, yeah. Obviously. If he were to be the second quarterback and one of the, the you know, lowest rated guys on a Georgia um, recruiting class, then he wouldn't be taking any money. And now you're talking about when are you ever going to even see the field? Because every year, Georgia's getting the top guys, right? So you don't even know. You could get buried. That could ruin your stuff, right? I just come in into a situation like this. Or you just, could play a year and then transfer. I mean, there's dude, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of mess that that can go. But, into but what I'm saying is you go there, you get buried in the depth chart, you get no NAL money, and then you know, you're two years removed or however many years removed from being a four star and now you're kind of forgettable. You have still haven't got NIL money and now you're gonna go in a transfer portal. Who's gonna take you? Versus okay, well if you're good, well yeah because you've been you've been you haven't been seen for a year, right? Yeah, but, but if you decide okay, I want to go to Syracuse and I'm going to be one of the better guys, play in a year or two, you know, after a freshman. So, so year. we're the stepping stone school. That's what we talk about with the the coaches and stuff. I mean, sadly, that's yeah. just where that's why I was saying it's a situation where we could see our recruiting take a jump. 
but we're going to see a lot more of our better players that Leap. aren't ready to go to the draft kind of go other places and make a little bit more money. <laughs> so. To the portal. <laughs> yeah, I know. It sucks. It sucks. We're right yeah. in the middle of a shit sandwich. Pretty much. So that's that's where we're at. Uh, I, I, I mean, it is what it is. This is college ball now, basketball and and football. It is what it is. There's Until not the a whole lot anyone's going to be able to do about it. Until they start putting some rules in, that's how it's going to be. Needs to be. No, even then. Even, well, no. You got to put I the mean, regulations look, in, right? You, but then you, you got to help people, hold people accountable and everybody. Uh, I don't think it's, that's, that cat is so far uh, gone from the bag. There's no, that's it, what I mean. Yeah, it's it's the 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 NCAA when they unleashed this, they did such an awful job. They just let everybody mm-hmm. do whatever the hell they wanted, and now it's like putting toothpaste back in the tube. You're not going to be able to do it. You may be able to implement a salary cap. You might be able to try to track some of this corruption, but you, there's no way to police it. It's it's so far gone at this point that it's just well, and even when they were policing it right the alabama oh, they, and georgia yeah and they Texas still the chose world. favorites they on get it in trouble right yeah exactly yeah. really they were they were but they were getting the smus and the syracuses and stuff like that right yeah yeah so they get to pick and choose who they want to punish and they're going to do that anyway so in this case they're just like you know what I mean, it's really hard to police this, so let's just let it go, because all the, the, all the guys we're going to favor anyway are going to benefit, so, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> it's pretty much. <laughs> so, I mean, that's it, yeah. People that were winning are still going to win. I think the salary cap idea is a good idea. I think that, you know, you have to put some kind of... But uh, there again, look, this stuff can only be tracked for so long before people start doing under-the-table things and... Then it just becomes the way it was. Instinct. Yeah, then just be, then it's just what it used to be. In the first but, place, but right with the but with a certain amount of money uh, on the up and up, and then the rest of it's tax free. I mean, it's just it's just going. My, I mean, what's worse, that, or <laughs> you just let it just do its thing, and we're and we just get to sometimes we get some really good recruits for a year and see what we can do with them. <laughs> we'll develop them for the bigger for the bigger teams. Yeah, I mean, you know, Syracuse is the the G League. So, hey, I mean, whatever. You never know. You can get some good bowl games that way. National championship, though, eh, I think that ship has sailed. It's just <laughs> no way. <laughs> like, We're you, pretty far away from that. Buddy. You just got to be good, really good, for a couple of years for that type of thing. Until they expand this, which. It's coming up, so I mean, there's <laughs> yeah. But how much? How much are they gonna have to expand it to? For We're gonna to have to do a 64 field, 64 team field, just like just like it's basketball. Not be, it's not gonna be that. I think there's something gonna, about going up to 12. 12 is great. Remember, 12 is great. Dungey's year. If we would have been able to pull out that Clemson game, we might have been able to actually. If we if there were 12, we might have been actually been able to make that. There, so. If you do 12 though, dude, and, and you do the top 12 ranked, which is Mm, still won't. Still, They're not going to do top twelve. I know. I know they like won't. They can't. They can't. Yeah, exactly. So it, the top twelve, though, at least there's a chance. At least there is a possibility. It's not out of the realm of possibilities. I mean, you know, I'd be it's, more. It's tough. Happy We're in a sixteen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hear you. It's just Syracuse is in a tough spot. They're in a really tough competitive conference, and then you got these other conferences that are becoming super conferences, and it's just. It's one of those things that, you know, maybe at some point they have to have two different types of championships for the NCAA, for D1. You know what I mean? Like no, kind of like an A team and a B team type thing. <laughs> a league, B league. Yeah, A league, B league. Yeah, yeah. Back like uh, my St. Matt's Cougar days. I remember working towards the A team. It was a goal of mine when I was a kid. All right. <laughs> Speaking of basketball, Bayheim's Army. They have put it together, and we've got. I, I'm really excited. So, who are, I'm, I'm most excited about Ra- uh, Raheem Christmas, first of all, since it's been a minute. Uh, Jimmy Bayheim coming back, Chris McCullough coming back, Andrew White coming back, BJ Johnson, 
Uh, got a couple new names. Um, Tyus Battles. First, this is his first year in this, right? Yeah. We haven't yeah. seen him. Uh, DeAndre Kane coming back. Um, Dwight Bikes, uh, new name. Grant Riller. And Matt Morgan comes back. So, um, you know, it's it's a good roster. It's not, you know, we're not used to seeing an Eric Devendorf on there, but I imagine he's going to be involved in some kind of way. But this is a good, it's a good team. It's a good team. Now, I would say, uh, with or with that said, really, it's the uh, bracket that we're in in the Syracuse region is kind of brutal. I mean, you could play um, Blue Collar U. You have to might have to pay, play them to get out of there, and they're the they're the champs, reigning champs. So um, Syracuse is going to take on Team Gibson, which I don't even. I tr- dude, I tried to look this up. I have no clue who Team Gibson is. It's their inaugural year, and I don't know what they're about. I could not find it. I went to the TBT website and I couldn't find it. So unless it, the TBT website wasn't working right, but we got the former the the reigning champs in our on our in our um bracket so it's 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 tough but it's gonna be fun it's always a it's always fun to watch last year eliminated early after after winning the championship the year before that kind of frustrating seems like syracuse either or what seems like Beheim's army i should say it, it seems like they they put together something real good or they just mediocre and they just fizzle out really quick so i think they're out in the second round last year and it wasn't even close like it was a terrible game so um, yeah, last year we there was injuries more than anything. Yeah, and then me I mean, personally. you know, the the championship year obviously was a grind. There were so many things that had to go happen, uh, had to happen for for us to pull that off. I think we got lucky a couple times, but um, that's what it takes. And if you don't got it, you might not make it. So, um, but it's always fun, and it's it's. Um, I think the first two rounds, by the way, are on like ESPN Plus or whatever. So none of it's going to reach TV, I don't think, until the round of 16. Is that right? Are they choosing different games? Because I remember, I remember last year they chose different games to put on uh, TV, and then some of it was on ESPN Plus. But there's a lot of money ESPN Plus. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed a lot more though this year than last year. So well, in the first round, there was a lot that were on ESPN Plus. Oh yeah, um, yeah, as, yeah, yeah. As we get as we go along, then it gets a little bit better. And um, just so people, because I know it's going to start, you know, at some point. But Chuku too. I don't know if I, m- I mentioned Chuku, but Pascal Chuku. He'll... We do have seven players that played for Syracuse versus the five that didn't. So we're still over that fifty percent threshold for it to be, you yeah, know, I'm a done. Syracuse thing. Um, but with that said, <laughs> don't be surprised if a majority of the playing time and the people that are doing good things with the basketball are players that did not play for Bayheim's Army. Well, like we, like, way. like in the championship year, we got to the point where we were like, we don't care. We just want, yeah. we just wanted yeah. to win. Right. Yeah, and that was when we had Tyrese Rice and DeAndre Kane and Kennedy and uh, yeah, DJ name? Kennedy and Kiefer one? Sykes. Sykes, Kiefer, yeah. That, Kiefer Sykes. I mean, those guys kind of carried us. Tyrese Rice, hit Sykes big was shot maniac. after big shot, and then Sykes, he he won the championship. Yeah. So I mean, if something like that is going to happen, then we're going to need that from some of these guys because really, when you look at it, I mean, yeah, we're going to have. Our bigger guys, you'll see out there because the bigger guys are, you know, Chukwu and um, Chris McCullough and Raheem Christmas, and then I'd say probably what the next next biggest guy is probably Jamil Wilson, who was about six seven six eight, um, who played for Marquette. Um, but yeah, they um, <laughs> we're gonna see a little bit of them depending on how big the other teams are that we're playing against. Uh, I don't know about Jimmy Beheim. Uh, I know that he didn't play too, too much last year. Uh, but when it comes to point guard or, or to guards, we are really, really guard heavy. And when you're looking at some of these names, I mean, I don't really know um, Ty's battle. Um, I don't really even know kind of what he's doing overseas or how well he's been playing. Um, 
but I know that Andrew White um, hasn't really been great in some of these tournaments. Uh, he's kind of just a sharpshooter that comes off the bench. But you know you're going to have your DeAndre Kane, um, and you know you're going to have Jamil Wilson's going to be playing. Dwight Bikes, he played a little bit of, of NBA. Um, Grant Riller, he was a um, he was an NBA draft pick uh, in 2020 by the Charlotte Hornets out of college at Charleston, and he I think just got finished with um, with a contract at the G League. He played the G League this past year, so he's looking to to um, you know show out to try to get some type of um, contract. And Matt Morgan, uh, I know that you don't know too much about the NBA draft and everything, but seven <laughs> four phenom from French from France, Victor Wembignana got drafted first um can bring up the ball he can shoot threes um looks like a, a pretty good player how, how Matt, many times did you practice saying his name before in the um, show it, when you really look at it it's really not that bad oh, okay, okay. it's it's gotcha. not i'm telling All you right. um but he played in the same french league as uh, matt morgan played in the same french league this year as uh, victor Wimignana, and he i think finished second um, behind Victor in the MVP voting, and he made the uh, first team All Star or whatever. So he was on the first team of like that league or whatever. So Matt Morgan right now has been playing very, very well and at a high level. Um, and then even BJ Johnson, uh, who went to LaSalle after two years of playing to Syracuse, he ended up making the uh, NBA as an undrafted player, and now he plays over in a decent Spanish league, but he's a good player too. So, um, I don't think we have a bad team. I just am just kind of want to prepare some of the Syracuse fans yeah. for the fact that a lot of the guys that are going to be out there in crunch time not going to are get- probably going to probably not going to be the Syracuse guys. Um, look, the TBT website this year sucks. It used to be really <clears throat> good. It used to give you all yeah. the information. It used to get you all the players. It used to tell you they're 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 each team's profile and what their purpose was and what, you know, what they, you know, why they were, who they were. And they don't have any of that. There's none of it. And it seems like there's a bunch of, but there's a good handful of new teams that I've never heard of. So with that said, it's just hard to deliver to you. Like what this really looks like other than the fact that, you know, everybody knows the nerd team. They're pretty good. And blue collar you, who's the, who's the ones in our, our side over here, and then the the Penn State team, Happy Valley Hoopers, um, and the Commonwealth as uh, UMass alum, and the Rhodey Way is Rhode Island alum. So I mean I don't know, it's 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 tough to give an honest like prediction of how they're gonna do, but like you said. It, the, the whole thing comes down to winning and you have to play who's going to be either have the hot hand or it's going to be a, a tough matchup or whatever. So yeah, I mean, whatever. I think we've all come to terms with the fact that this isn't just a Syracuse alum team anymore. And actually to win, you have to go outside that and that's nothing against the Syracuse alum, but eventually you're going to, who knows, maybe next year we get a Carmelo Anthony. You know, imagine what kind of other guys a Carmelo Anthony on the team would bring. You know, think about that. That would be huge. You know, be like, oh man, I could play with Carmelo Anthony. It'd be a yeah. you could put together a freaking all star team. You know, so you could never know. But yeah. hey, uh, so just looking at it, just as far as heads up goes, um, because the games are being played at War Memorial. Um, and it the starts. Round. It starts on the 18th or something like that, right? July, no, July 24th. No, no, no. We play the 24th. Oh, the whole tournament is, starts on the 19th. The 19th, yeah. yeah. The 19th. So yeah, all four games in our region are July 24th. Ours is the third game at 7 p.m. that night on ESPNU, um, and then uh, the semifinals are two days later, and that would be that's a Monday night, Monday seven. Um, July 24th. And then the next round, the winners of those games would be playing against each other um, at 6 and at 8 o'clock on uh, that same Wednesday night. And then the championship game is that Friday night at 9 p.m. So uh, 
that's that's the schedule there. So hopefully we can get it together and we can get three good games in five days, week of basketball in the middle of the summer, um, and and then give us a little bit more if we can get through that. Yeah, and we'll we'll see what we can do as far as getting back for any kind of wrap up or follow up or chit chat as far as that goes. Um, but gives us about another three weeks. Uh, okay, look, the one thing that happened uh, since we've been gone that's that's more important than the recruits or Bayheim's army is this whole LaQuint Allen situation. And I'm not real sure. Um, I, I'm not real sure why things really went down the way they went down. This Syracuse has got some kind of kangaroo court going on, some kind of student slash faculty juror or jury, and um, you know, at the end of the day. I think these charges are. Not, I don't think the charges were were basically dropped. Okay, it was basically um, the what was it called? An adjournment of contemplation of dismissal. So if he stays, if LaQuint Allen stayed out of trouble for the next six months, the, the records would be sealed and there there would be no charges. Everything would be dropped and forgotten about. But the school just can't apparently let that go. So. Um, Allen not in trouble with anything, any anything as far as legally, okay. But you've got the jury of your peers who subsequently decided that he should be suspended for two semesters, essentially destroying his college football career over something that um, it basically evolved into a, into a mess. The story goes, Deuce Chestnut came to LaQuint Allen, right, and said, hey, look, I was just jumped by four or five dudes. And so they go out to this party, and uh, the the guy who he ends up getting the scuffle with says, you you hit a woman or something like that. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then he punches him. He punches him twice. He punches him once in the side of the face and once in the nose. Gives LaQuint Allen a bloody nose. LaQuint Allen retaliates. LaQuint Allen's the one in trouble. Um, he did not call the cops or the, um, you know, or the campus police or whatever. So <laughs> the guy's defending himself. I mean, who who stops in the middle of defending themselves and says, "Hey, we gotta go. We, let's call the campus police down here first, okay? Before this gets out of control." Uh, no, that's not how things work. He defended himself, um, and then. This council was comprised of students and faculty, I heard. I heard it was just students. Um, There's no video or anything of this. It's just um, LaQuinn Allen's version of events, which was actually corroborated during this, um, I don't know if you want to call it a trial, during this whatever the hell it was. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, he gets gets levied this this two-semester suspension. He tried to... um, Try to get this appealed. It didn't work. And so now he's suing the school so he can play football. And it seems like the punishment doesn't fit the crime <coughs> because the punishment doesn't fit the crime. And Terry, Terry Lockett's no. name came up in this too. And something to do with that. But I guess later, um, you know, LaQuint Allen said basically he, he wasn't there. He had nothing to do with it. And so... We're left with a bunch of holes to be filled. I think Syracuse.com actually had a decent, like, not not so much yeah. a timeline of events, but more so a. Well, they they yeah, they so basically took they they took the they they took it all and kind of filled some of the holes in, and and we're still left with, um, some questions. But at the end of the day, this what had happened. And LaQuinn Allen's essentially the only one that's been in trouble as far as we know. The school, first of all, Syracuse is they're they're really pathetic. They can't even give a they can't even give a statement on this. And um, they just keeping every keeping their, their lips sealed. And I just don't think that the punishment fits the crime. I think everybody agrees. And not only that, but we got these kangaroo courts in these in these colleges uh, who are who are allowed to determine one man's future. 
for the rest of his life. And I mean, they could essentially destroy him with this one decision and one mistake he's yeah. made. He hasn't, he hasn't been into trouble up to this point, um, as far as we know. And um, he's, he had three letters of character that were written and um, obviously, you know, backed him up as, as a moral, good, upstanding guy. And um, here we are ruining this kid's life. He's 18 years old, by the way. It's not like, you know, he's in his fourth year, fifth year of college and he should know better. Yeah. Well, I mean, even then, you never really even know, right? I mean, just because you're four years in college, I mean, this this supposed, you know, this person that he got into an altercation with that hit him first is a 23-year-old male student. This is a guy that's five years older than him. Um, so that's obviously doesn't necessarily mean anything. But, you know, a couple other things, you know, um, according to LeQuint, uh, the um, – the attacker threatened to return with a gun after they fought. And so uh, LeQuint immediate, immediately left the party. Ten days after the party, 23-year-old male student wrote an incomplete and unsworn statement to Syracuse police alleging he lost a tooth and sustained head and neck injuries after fighting with SU players, um, football players, right? And so it was incomplete. It was uns- I mean, there was a lot of missing things, and criminal charges were initially filed against LeQuint. He fully cooperated the investigation, and after talking with the police and you know, stories and everything corroborating with people, the, the, the charges were dropped against LeQuint as far as criminal charges. So then, I'm assuming, it went to the university. Um, now, you know, LeQuint has done nothing but stand up and say that he wishes he could have done it differently. He's taken accountability. Um, but basically, the community standards staff of the... Uh, of the, the school, um, they came out and basically the verdict was that they blame LeQuint for escalating. Um, Be- because he went there, because he wasn't there, and he then went he there. went there. Right, basically. But at the end of the day, you know, in the verdict, cited that all injuries that do not account for the fact. So, yeah, so then that's the other thing, right, is that there's multiple people, there's multiple um multiple witnesses that saw that this guy had gotten in more than one altercation. Um he has talked about fighting football players, and then there was talks about him getting in other altercations. So, yes, is, although he might have had all these injuries and there's proof of all these injuries, who were to say that those were injured from, what, one punch that but, Quinn Allen, you yeah. know? So, I mean, he was in so many fights. Who knew what happened to what, right? Um, so you don't even know what, what the deal is. And um, it really didn't question the validity of the 23-year-old statement at all. And even though he had changed it and gone back and forth and – even according to these people at this, um, you know, where they had to go and, and testify, they said that it was up to LeQuint. It was responsible for LeQuint to get that other student to the hearing if he wanted him to testify. Yeah, that's what this, um, what Caitlin Carroll had told him. And she's like, yes. the, she's like the court jester. And basically what she said is it was up to him if he wanted him to attend the hearing but he realized, you know, he didn't have the dude's contact info. So why why would it be up to? <laughs> why would they? First of all, why would they expect these guys to communicate with one another? That seems so. That seems so. That just it's goes dark. to show you. That just goes to show you how stupid this whole there thing was, is. There's that, no one even mediating. You have to. You'd have to figure there would at least be some type of mediating, lawyerish type figure, no, this, right? This this that Caitlin tells, Caitlin tells this Carroll person. should be doing it. Who, well, who? then if that's the, yeah, that's the case, he, and that's the case. Like, I don't know. And then my question, too, is is that, I mean, who is this 23-year-old student? Well, that's, I mean, yeah, that's the other thing is he hasn't been named. I mean, we haven't filled that hole in. And, he, you know, he's obviously been there a while, right? So, and, and, <laughs> and so, <laughs> look, he was out causing trouble. He wants to start fights with, with football players. I mean, stupid, okay? He had, so... Uh, he claims LeQuint knocked his tooth out, which, which could be. LeQuint said he hit him once. But he also had other injuries. He said he hurt his, he hurt his neck and he hurt his head. And, um, you know, know, he was pretty, he'd been, he'd been through it. It wasn't just from one punch from LeQuint, who was um, essentially defending himself. And look, that's just what, everything that I've read and heard and the evidence from people who have written those things and said those things, have has said that he was defending himself that there's witnesses that say that the um the da uh fitzpatrick right that's his name right william fitzpatrick said that 
the evidence points to him defending himself and you know that's why essentially they let this stuff go with this this acd or whatever the heck this thing's called this uh, adjournment and contemplation of dismissal which means you can't don't get in trouble for six months everything's gonna be sealed up and, and locked away so look it's it's i think the whole thing is kind of a joke i think that syracuse can they get out of their own way when it comes to no. controversy like every, every year it seems like there's something dumb that they're doing and, and it starts at the top and everybody you know the the chancellor we've given him plenty of shit um as well we should and you know the um athletic director seems to squirt out of this stuff and 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 it's just where are they what in 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 why why can't we get some kind of statement you got this you're, you're ruining this kid's life he's 18 years old he hasn't entered the transfer portal by the way deuce chestnut entered the transfer portal two days later he's like <laughs> he's like i don't know if that was the reason i don't know if it's the reason I, either I, uh, but he pieced fun. out pretty quick so uh you know and he wasn't even in trouble but you know to punish a guy no, no one got in trouble but him correct Correct, which is and weird. According to this, according to the verdict, Rich and Carroll cite all injuries that the student allegedly suffered: a lost tooth, split head, swollen lip, and stitches and staples needed. Where were the stitches and staples? Though I didn't, I didn't see it, that. It doesn't even say. And it's it, stitches. It's not, stitches could be in the mouth. Count. Staples yeah, would be in the head. Does not count for the fact that the individual got into multiple altercations that night, and they do not attempt to question how many of the injuries are a result of what fights and all that other stuff like that. No one else got in trouble. His statement was garbage. I don't he, understand. He, he changed his story. Um, obviously, he had an altercation with Ch- Deuce Chestnut before this whole thing even happened. And you're going to blame the kid for getting... Now, look. In hindsight, LaQuint's probably like, why the hell did I get up and go to that party and do that? That was so dumb. And he knows that. He's, he, has, he has said so much as that, by the way. He, he said... I'm not denying responsibility for my actions. I made a foolish and juvenile mistake. I should have called SU's Department of Public Safety when my friend told me he was attacked. Boom. Okay? He shouldn't have got up and went to the party. He realized that now. You know, it, everything's kittens and roses in hindsight. That's not what happened. He made a freaking mistake. And now uh, they're trying to ruin his... First of all, wouldn't he lose the scholarship too? I mean... Um, That's the whole point. The whole point is... is unless. And let's just well. Besides we also, his career, his football career. Well, yeah. Besides his football career, I mean, it'd be one thing if he was just suspended from the season. Um, and honestly, that would probably be overkill, in my opinion. I mean, max one three games, suspend him. You know what I mean? Put him on, you know, your scholarship probation, so you don't get in trouble and everything like that. But to, I mean, hell, he could have got suspe- They could have suspended him for spring, spring practice in the spring game. Right. right, and he um, yeah, and he played. Uh, what he did was not. It's not. You don't need to kick him out of school for a year for him to, for him to to re- understand what, that and, what he did was and, wrong and right. learn from his decisions or from his his yes, bad decisions. Right, right. But yeah. like at the end of the day, like you said, it's a situation where sometimes and in some events, this ruins somebody's some somebody's life. I mean, think about all the stuff that pe- people are doing stuff out in. Normal, and I know this has nothing to do with Syracuse University, but people out in the society are doing stuff that should put them in jail, and they're getting let out the next damn day. This in, is a fight in that, that state. Hap- <laughs> in that state, this is a fight that happened. I mean, we've had fights, we've had things that have happened, right? We've had certain things, and people get it, there's there's something called a second chance. You know, you don't just you don't just kick a kid out, and and then there's another couple other things that go down to it when you have to also think about. The situation and, and what you're actually doing to the kid. The kid's not from the greatest place. No, in the th- world. no, he has been sending some grant money or whatever back home. He's been, he's it, look. His father was just killed. His father was just killed over the the spring yeah. uh, due to a homicide. It yeah. wasn't anything that was expected or unexpected medically. He he you did know, make a he statement. He he made he said something along the lines of, um, you know, without giving too much detail. SU is being at SU has changed his life and his family's life. And, um, you know, (laughs) but he's also mentioned he can't afford to go there. Yeah, obviously most of them can't. And he just, he just wants his punishment to be fair. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that, you know, 
first of all, they drag these things out. And, 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 and someone at the end of the day needs to grow some a set of balls. And um, Where's Dino with this? Uh, well, I don't know if Dino can say anything. And, and as much as you want to criticize him, I feel... I'm not, I don't want to criticize him, I, but somebody... Well, I mean, the thought crossed my mind. Yeah. issues, right? Well, I mean, you, you yeah. dropped the ball with the Bayheim retirement. Yeah. You dropped the ball with j- jumping into NIL late. Yeah. Right? Well, when you and said you weren't going to, we're not going to play that game. We're going to be... We're going to be upstanding citizens here. We're not going to get down and, the mud with these and guys. And now, I'm sorry, but you have a situation where, again, you want to be, you know, everyone's all about this DEI now. And I'm not saying that I'm not, right? But div- div- diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? And all this stuff. And the, the fact that we're an independent, li- probably in a liberal state, a private school. And they, this is the type of, they they preach that stuff. Yeah, they and don't with, it. with all of that... You're I mean, in this wait, case. Wait, hey, real, you could you could be sending on, a young, a young person of color just back on the streets and into jail. Um, what what happened to Chase Scanlon? What happened to Chase Scanlon? I mean, I know he ended up, he ended up, um, he end oh, of course. This is a Syracuse.com article, and I can't get to it. Um, I know he ended up I mean, transferring, I don't think, I don't but think he. That any, I don't think that anybody in any socio, socio or economical, like anybody in any type of situation, if this happens at 18 years old at a college, a little college fight, whatever, especially considering, I'm sorry, LeQuint's 18. He wasn't at the party. This 23-year-old who's been in school for whoever knows how long, old enough to drink, build, been willing to bet that he was drunk, trying to t- t- talk and start fights with football players, and then something happened, right? Where's the accountability of the 23 or the adult in the room that actually hit the dude first that was probably under the influence? Yeah. Um, like, to me, this is somebody that's, that's being protected. Like, if, I'm, I'm sorry, but, you, you know, you have all these people that want to, to, to yell racism or yell this or, you know, that uh, give me an example of this. this there, here's an example. I'm willing to bet that 23-year-old guy is not a person of color. Well, it would be, I mean, who knows? We don't know. We, we don't know, but I, I can no, tell you. No, I mean, obviously this is all speculation, but I'm sorry, but from, from, one, from one side to the other, this just seems unjust as hell, and it doesn't make any damn sense. So well, I'm just searching here's for Here's my thought. I'm searching here, for a here's, reason. Here's my only, my only reason or, or thought behind how lopsided this punishment is, is that whoever that... 23 year old student was that had his tooth knocked out is maybe friends with someone on this kangaroo court or has ties to it in one way or another i have no idea nothing else makes sense that's what i mean make it make sense that's why it doesn't this is all speculation i have i have no idea but this is the only things that i can come to conclusion to to think that it makes any sense whatsoever which again is just corruption it is corrupt. Well, this this sto- look. I've always said, and I know you agree with me, but mm-hmm. um, that Syracuse is the university sucks as a school mm-hmm. is corrupt. It and is, being, is a and terrible like we place. Talked about before, it's becoming harder and harder to cheer. I mean, I bled orange, and I know it's not the athletes' fault. I've that's always, the only reason why I'm holding on. But I'm not doing it because of the university. I've always been able to separate it, but it is increasingly harder to separate it because what they're doing affects. The, the the part of Syracuse University that I love, and that is the sports. Chase Scanlon, I cannot get to the article, but I'm almost positive this kid was just suspended for a couple of games after an a, a assault with a, with a um, – I think he broke his girlfriend's phone and shoved her around a little bit and stuff like that. He ended up transferring, but um, maybe that's why there was no kangaroo court for Chase, but um, could very well be. But obviously, LeQuint wants to stay. And he just wants his punishment to be fair. And he wants to get reinstated. He wants to go to school. He wants to get an education. And he wants to try his hand at um, football. And he's a talented kid, too. He's 18 freaking years old. Give the kid another shot. You have to. You absolutely have to. And I think at the end of the day, when this is all said and done, I think that they will make Syracuse as a university will make the right decision, but 
for to take this long now there is um there is going to be this is going to be going to court on july 12th if i'm if i remember right so we'll know more after that but for there not to be a statement made by the chancellor or the athletic director or even Dino Babers is quite, con- I don't want to say it's concerning, but I think it's, I think it, I think it stinks. Dude, the and fact by, and by uh, stinks, some, I mean. The, the fact that a verdict like this was allowed to even happen is ridiculous to me. The fact that there's not an adult or a leader in the room at the top of that that's like, no, you're going to do what? No, this, no, no. This, this Caitlin Carroll lady is at the top of it as far as i read and i don't know exactly what she does but this is just a um a jury comprised of some kids or probably law students right um they didn't take self-defense into consideration in their decision by the way i read i believe that was out of the uh emily leaker in the syracuse.com article so no their whole their whole stance is, is that the, you weren't there in the beginning yes. and you put yourself in there. Right. You would have, this would have never happened if you didn't go there. Right. But you know But then you can go down the rabbit hole, right? Right. Well you're gonna re- you're really gonna what? The guys you're not the guy, Some people have to understand where people where kids are from. Okay? You don't just go to the cops. You don't just call the cops every time you get in a fight where LaQuinn Allen's from, where a lot of these kids are from. We're, and to see here and where act we're like from, Joe. Like we're, we're from happen. East. We're from East Syracuse. Did you? Where did you? Most people are from. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we're from East Syracuse, the village, tough. The the tough village. We didn't call the <laughs> cops. <laughs> Give me a break. It's no. just. It's just. It's a lot of it we has to do with them. where you grew up, but a lot of it also has to do with your age. And you don't call oh, the yeah. cops sometimes. Sometimes you just get yourself in trouble. I think we've all been there. Fortunately for me, it didn't ruin my life. It's ruining his life. It's dumb. And Very dumb. Um, and uh, I think, uh, like I said, I think there's not much more to say about it. We can sit here and vent about it. But uh, at the end of the day, I think Syracuse makes the right decision. And if they don't, heads should roll. Better. Heads should roll. And if they're going to keep having these, these, these phony little courts with these wannabe prosecutors going to SU on mom and dad's dime that needs to be split up and split up quick that's what I want to know I want to know who these people are I want to know I want to know who this 23 year old is yeah I would like to know I'm sure we will I'm sure we'll find all that out and maybe it'll make more sense after that but um, to put the hands uh, to put LaQuint's future in the hands of some wannabe prosecutors that probably are very affluent in going to school on mom and dad's dime, I think is that's a shitty way to conduct business. And you're supposed to be a freaking reputable uh, college and you're, and, you're, and you're letting kids determine another kid's future. Yeah. For, uh, well, for I mean, and even a simple then, mistake many it. kids have made, including you and I. I mean... The way that I, oh, of course, and the way that I look at it, like I said, I mean, even putting another aspect into it, I hope, you know, obviously they're going to have a lawyer and they're going to have all that stuff. But you look at it, I mean, twenty-three years old, right? The guys that he were fighting, they were under twenty-one. Where were they? What party were they at? Was there alcohol? Was this guy inebriated? Was LaQuint drinking? Were that was there underage drinking? Was there things? Guess what? If you're over twenty-one and there's underage drinking, then you're responsible. So what party were they at? What was going on? Is this 23-year-old that got punched and that was starting crap? How drunk was he? Was he the only one over 21 years old? You know what I mean? Like, who's, who's responsible? There's a lot of different things when you got to look at it. And at the end of the day, this 23-year-old should have known better. And, and I mean, age here has something to do with it. And I honestly think that, you know, there's, you got to look at relationships with these other people, too. And you got to look at, I mean, obviously, you know, got to look at these people that, that led the investigation, Joshua Rich and Katie Carroll. You know, what is their character like? What have they gotten in trouble? You know what I mean? What, what's, uh, there's a lot of things to look into. And now that you, you turn it into you're being sued and you're going to actually have a lawyer that's going to actually have these questions to sit here and ask how these people came to that, that conclusion. Um, 
I think that 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 this lawyer is going to make these people look like idiots. And to be perfectly honest make with look you, I would foolish because the whole thing's foolish. So it should be pretty easy for a lawyer to make it look stupid. Is it, to make it look as stupid as it is. Realistically, yes. And at the end of the day, I mean, I could see a situation where he could get it to where now he's going to get he could get this 23 year old guy in trouble and it's going to court. So guess what? Quinn Allen isn't going to have to go find this person. He's going to be court ordered to go there. He's going to be court ordered to talk just like Carol uh, and Rich are. So um, they're all going to look stupid. They're going to have their they're going to have the initial police report and then why the police you know, trash the, trash the charges, right? They're going to have um, all the different statements that this 23-year-old, he made and how they changed. He's going to have all of the players and all of the people that they knew that were actual people that saw what was going on. I mean, when this goes into an actual court, I mean, I feel like this judge is going to make these people look like idiots, and I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't some back... Some 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 backlash. Stuff in the some, back. Yeah. Um, well, just some stuff where the twenty three like a counter like a counter suit like like hey you know maybe a civil yeah. case. My I'm sure there's 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 money being doled out for said lawyers and whatnot. Uh, a couple things uh, from Twitter real quick at baptized by, by fire. Our buddy Dominic says that it was moved to seven nineteen. So it's not seven twelve. It was moved to seven nineteen. Um, level up, Luke. He quote tweeted someone named um, Got H Law, something like that. This guy seems to be, he says, I was an EOE and campus judicial officer for UMN. No way this would even hit my desk. Um, at our Boris 9, school officials probably can't comment due to legal issues. Policy seemed to have a checklist, although flawed, that was met. School may have even told LeQuint to take legal action to force their hand should find out more in legal proceedings. I mean, I, I mean, I guess that's true. That's, but, but before all of that happened though, I would say that they could have said something and they did not. So it didn't start with this whole thing ended with the lawsuit. It didn't start with the lawsuit and it was appealed and it, and he was rejected. So that's why, he, yeah, he, he appealed that's, it. That's yeah, that's why he got a lawyer. So, with that said, I think that if if as you, look, I don't give. And here's the thing, right. Rob, and I appreciate the comment, but here's my thing: I give F, SU no benefit of the doubt anymore. Okay, because most of the time it is what you see it is, and they had plenty of chances to say something um, during the acquittal, before the acquittal, after this kangaroo court had determined what kind of um, punishment they were going to levy. And they didn't. Um, oh, here we go. And so that's all I got. I, I saw this from, I'm sorry. Uh, at Yold Dog, I think. If you want insight on Chase Scanlon's situation, DM me. I know him and the victim. I know everything that happened. Okay. Um, at Q's Friars. He says no one cares. Two, two, Yold Dog, one. Um, Who does? <laughs> You have to go through the, the through the timeline, but anyway, um, uh, yeah. So back to back to Rob's comment. I think I think Syracuse missed an opportunity. If that's the case, if they can't say anything due to the legal issue now, they missed an opportunity to do so, and shame on them. Period. They had time to do it. They just can't now. I I accept that, but I don't agree with it. I think I think that um, no, someone's in charge that they're afraid to say something to unless they're the problem. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. Something it's just that they're either too afraid to say something because it's of their own job, or they are the problem. Yeah, it's one of the two. Now, let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, it's just what it is. Right? Yeah, I mean, it seems that way. Uh, like I said, I don't give them the benefit of the doubt much anymore. I just don't know if it's just like corporate America now, man. Middle well, management is got to keep their America. mouth shut or else they're gone. It is. Cor- the colleges are corporate America now. Yeah, I know. And middle management needs to be quiet or else they lose their jobs because it's never their boss's fault. Yeah, but you have yeah. never have a guy that's in middle management that's got the nuts to stand up and, and just you blow can, the whole thing open. You lose your job. Well, you lose your freaking job then, I guess. Yeah. My wife was prepared to lose her job recently within the past year or two. Me too. For standing up. So, um, you know, I was prepared for her to... Lose her job as well. 
I was right there with her. So, <laughs> yep. uh, so, you know, I mean, sometimes it takes some balls and you know, if, if you, if you see something, say something, sometimes it's the best thing to do. I don't know if, um, if that's the case, but I think we're going to find out more come July 19th. Uh, Rob, says uh, there's a school policy that was set at some point in time. That policy may have prevented them from commenting publicly. I mean, it's, I mean all of that is possible. Yeah, and I, and it's I, all possible. And I, and like I, get I said, it. we're all, it's all assumptions now at this point, right? Yeah. Um, so you just hope that the legal process plays out. And I agree with, correctly. I agree with you, Lee. If you're in the thread, I do. I agree with you. I think that the Chase Scalen thing is relevant. I just don't know how quickly he entered the transfer portal after his situation. And that's the only thing that may have stopped the kangaroo court from actually handing down some kind of punishment other than a couple game suspension. So I don't know where the couple game suspension came from. I'm not even sure if it was a couple games. But I do remember it was a light slap on the wrist for Chase Scanlon um, during that whole incident. Um, shame on him. He wore the 22 as well, which sucks. Um, like I said, there's it's, it's, it's a college. <laughs> there's parties. There's fights. Things happen. Yeah, and I mean, maybe Chase Galen's um, punishment was too much as well. I don't remember exactly what it was. Maybe it was too much. Maybe it wasn't enough. The whole I point mean, is, is that it wasn't even close to what LaQuint's was, and no. and that involved breaking a phone and, and involved a woman and hands on a woman and shit like that. So. It's, yeah, that's that. I mean, look, LeQuint should get some type of. He's yes. just, he should have gotten some type of small punishment, so that he could learn. Maybe he still can. To, to just not, yeah. Hopefully, you know what? You, what you do is you just learn how to just not throw yourself in every situation and put yourself in those situations. But as far as I'm concerned, this t- it sounds like this 23 year old got everything he he deserved. And hopefully, he by getting his tooth knocked well. out, getting stitches in the mouth, and possible staples. I mean, you're 23 years old. You're basically <laughs> dealing with a fr- like it's a freshman. It's a it's a kid. You're it's a high school technically kid, an adult. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. if anything, you know, it sounded like that guy needed needed that running around messing with football players. Yeah, he was probably crap. he was probably drunk. He's probably running his mouth. Probably you know he's probably one of those guys that might need his ass kicked. He's probably a big guy, so he's out there trying to push everybody's buttons he could, and. He ended up getting a tooth knocked out. I mean, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. I mean, yep, that's where we're much. at. You know what I'm saying? That's and unfortunately, pretty much where we're at. He and lost like a I tooth. Said, I mean, I'd like to know. I'd like to know who this person. Like, I'd like to have a name. You know, to see if there's any type of special treatments. You know, is he related to somebody? In the, you know, does he have a relationship with with somebody that that was in that you know part of that kangaroo court? Does he have a relationship with somebody in the faculty? Right. Um, Again, what, where was the party? Was there alcohol? Was he the only one that was the oldest one there? Was he the only one over 21, you know? I mean, why, why are you at a party with football players? Or was it vice versa? You know, I mean, a lot of that stuff to me um, in the courtroom, it matters to me. And to me, a 23-year-old acting like that and getting in multiple fights and punching somebody first and saying that, I mean, LaQuint's telling, saying that he was threatening to come back with a gun like and he did come problem. back. None. He did. He did come back. But he 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 was in a car with some buddies or something like that. I mean, I just don't. We don't know. We don't all know what happened, right? And when it comes down to the day where they need to talk about it, the guy doesn't even show up. And then they try to talk to LaQuint and say that it's up to you, you eighteen-year-old freshman who you don't even know how to get a hold of, to get a hold of this twenty-three-year-old guy that you got in a fight with to make sure he comes here and that he speaks. Like what? It doesn't even make any sense. It's absolutely ridiculous. And to be perfectly honest with you, uh, they, the university should already be in place of fixing this process and fixing the way that things like this uh, get, get treated. Because this is ridiculous. Like, this should never happen again. It, yeah, I mean, to say the least. We'll see. I can't wait to see what SU says and what, and what Coach says. Because at some point, they're going to have to say it something. It took six months. It took six months to do. Well, not even that, right? Didn't he get to play in the bowl game, by the way? Didn't the bowl game happen after this? It did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so, I mean. Because I don't think none of this stuff got filed or anything. Well, the, the, the whole, the whole, game, yeah, the whole um, Syracuse 
Judicial Council, I think is what it's called, by the way. I keep calling it the kangaroo court because that's what it is. But <laughs> the Syracuse Judicial Council probably hadn't met yet. I mean, shouldn't you take into consideration, though, just real quick, that um, that the DA basically didn't even take this case up? He's like, dude, look, stay out of trouble for six months, man. Okay? Stay out of trouble for six months. Seal us up. Bada bing, bada boom. Never happened. I mean, yeah, does I, none of that get taken into consideration that the that the that the Syracuse DA was did did that? You know what I mean? The fact that this much time and money has even had to go into such a open and shut dude, you're 23. You punched him first. It's a fight. Get over it. Yeah, like that's. I'm sorry. It's about as far as this crap should have went. And for what it's worth, there is a. Uh, I hate these. Ch- I, I gotta be honest with you. I'm just gonna be honest. These change dot really. org things. What what has uh, one of them changed? Has one of them ever changed anything? I don't know. Probably not. But you can go sign one if you want. The hashtag let LeQuint play change dot org. I signed it. Uh, it's got uh, 1,218 signatures on it. I don't know how many it takes for Syracuse to eat their own words, but more than that, evidently. Um, so. <laughs> Who knows? It's just to, it's just to show that hey, you know what? We're not happy about this, and let the kid play some freaking football. And that's that. Just don't um, ruin his life, man. Like, if, like I said on Twitter, you know Matt Sherman. He had he shared a great, great video uh, by Nick Saban. I don't know how old it is, but it was him giving a little speech about um, about this type of thing, about how the kids they make a mistake and how everyone just kind of kills him, if the he, media if he, kills him. And if he wasn't playing football, this wouldn't happen. No. Absolutely not. I don't think there's any way that if LaQuinn Allen isn't going to be the starting running back for the Syracuse Orange this year, this this happens. There's no way. I, I highly doubt anything happens. Yeah. Obviously, but- the 23-year-old, whoever, the 23-year-old no-name, nothing happened to him. He doesn't play sports. And he didn't show up. He apparently he doesn't have to, because LeQuint's supposed to arrange that. Yeah, because LeQuint's supposed to drag him in. Well, sure, that would be another assault, right? <laughs> Are they going to get him for kidnapping so that he can bring him to his own freaking... How dumb. Like, come on. Like, what That's kind the of... dumbest thing ever. It's literally like, you show up or else LeQuint doesn't get in trouble. That's exactly what it should have been like. Yeah, but instead, yeah. he doesn't show up, and then LeQuint gets... <laughs> Well, punished by it, and this guy doesn't even get punished. Oh, but by this it. guy's thinking is, well, I'm not going to go there. It's going to make me look bad and Why him look would good. I go there? Why yeah. would I go there? That's Why dumb. A lie? I mean, I'm pretty yeah. dumb, but I'm not that dumb. That's what that guy's saying. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, or maybe he was too busy fighting some other people. Who knows? Who knows? He's probably one of them angry drunk guys. You know, we've all we all know that type. Yeah, but it's just you know you listen to this. I mean, I. I don't know. Maybe you can put it on here at the end or whatever, or have you know? Maybe we can get people to go listen to it or whatever. But it's a great, it's a great story about when he was at Michigan State, head coach at Michigan State, and he had Musin Muhammad who got into some trouble, and media killed him. They wanted him off the team, and he suspended him, and he ended up going on to a 15-year career in the NFL, and I and now he owns his own company or he's a president of of, of a company. He had seven kids. His oldest kid went to – is going to like Princeton or something like that. And it's just this huge success story that like if he would have – just didn't let, out, it's, let it's, one moment to find this kid's life. Right. Exactly. And it's not – not to say that it would have 100% completely ruined his life if Nick Saban kicked him off the team. But those things do happen. And that's what Nick Saban talked about, about giving these kids yeah, road's, second chances. Road's tougher you know? to hoe from and, there. You know, if you, 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 know, if you have to – build back up from something you know if you're on the track for something and you get pushed back down i mean it just makes it that much harder right and i think yeah. this is probably even worse than that so well, and the worst part about it is right is this little quint i mean he's from a place where you're like oh i'm gonna i want to use football to get out of where i'm from to make money to get my parents out of where i'm from so right. they don't have to worry about certain things right make get the nfl buy your parents a house so they ain't got to worry about that kind of crap right and so he gets to Syracuse, he does this, and then he gets into a fight for sticking up for somebody. 
And it's basically self-defense because he got punched first. Now he's getting kicked out for a year. And then after this happens, his father dies by getting in in a homicide. So now he's got that heartbreak that he's going through with this situation. He's getting kicked out of school. And he doesn't have the money and his family doesn't have the money to send him to Syracuse again. So, I mean, when you realistically think about it, this kid is going to be forced to go back home to where he's trying to get away from, in a place where his dad just tragically jo- died. And he's going to have to sit here and get over this whole situation. Well, what do you think is best for this, for this guy to get over this? To stay in school, have something to concentrate on, play football, be with his friends, learn, so that he can actually still go on and try to, you know, reach his goals. Yeah. And now you're going to you're going to put him back there, back home, back into the streets, back into that situation. I mean, this is this is a decision that could ruin a kid's life. Yeah. Hey, Dominic, are you there? I'm trying to get used to this. I don't got you, Dom, if you're talking. So apparently you can request to speak on this, too, Joe, like um, the green room. Or Spotify live? No, oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, says he's speaking, or supposed to be able to speak, but I'm not hearing him. So maybe that's... Oh, hold on a second. Hold on. Dom. Speak up. No. Okay. I got nothing. <laughs> got yeah, let's, nothing. Try, let's try this one. Let's try this one. Oh, now he's over here just pressing buttons, huh? Oh, let's try this. Hold on. I'm playing around now. Hello? Y- Yuli. My- yes. Hey. Okay. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm, I'm very glad that this is a conversation that we need to have because I don't think the Syracuse administration handles anything well. I, I went there in 2019 when there was so much going on. I ended up transferring out after, but it, it wasn't anything like atmosphere related. It was just more like school wise, but... I just think that they don't handle situations right. There's a reason why they've come under scrutiny over so many handlings, especially the Chase Scanlon one. Like, they were sued for a lot of money because they were protecting Chase. The police really did not care about the victim that much. He didn't get any punishment at all. His own teammates turned on him and did not want him around the team, and even they felt like he should have gone to jail. And I think that him getting arrested after the DUI too and just saying he had to restart some program that really didn't change him because he's probably going to do it again and now he's playing professionally sport because he plagiarized my 10 page paper and the teacher regraded it and he ended up getting a higher score on his paper than me and then he went and did it to his teammate two weeks later and he still didn't get punished so it just goes to show how much they like to protect the lacrosse players. And now seeing this one punch at a party, I mean, what, you want these kids to just sit and do nothing? No, they want to go and have a good time. And What's a 23-year-old doing on a South Campus party anyway? He went to defend his friend, and now he's getting he could get a year-long suspension. It's a double standard, and it's very obvious why. And I just think that they did a horrible job at handling it. Well... Very well said, first of yeah. all. Now, obviously, I just have to say, I don't know, I mean, I don't know you, but I, I assume that's your version of events and, um, and, and some of the other stuff that you talked about with Chase, and we'll take your word for it, but I understand where you're coming from, and um, that's, that's, kind of, that's kind of our point, but without being anyone on the inside, we just obviously think that. I think this isn't the only situation in the Chase situation, aren't the only two situations that Syracuse have handled poorly. I think they handle a lot of situations poorly. I'm not there. I don't know all of it, and I don't see all of it. But you as a student, obviously, you said that you ended up transferring out of there because of just the environment. Well, no, no, no. It, it, it was it was school-related. Like, okay. When I, I applied to transfer into Whitman, and I didn't get in, and it was during COVID. My I got parents you. thought that a different school. Yeah, but... No, when I was there, I was connected to a lot of people, especially when all the racism incidents went on and the handling of that and how a lot of the students had a problem with the, how the police handled it and how 
Chev Ruth, uh handled it, and now losing Adam Weissman as a main donor for NL. Oh, that's another NIL. one. Yeah, that's a that's a that's another good one that happened recently. That they just handled that poorly too. And again, yeah. we don't get any we don't get any statement from the school on any of this stuff. They could just they can just de- deny a request for statement and kick the can down the road and just hope brush it under the rug and, rug and hope it goes away. And that's that tends to be um, Syracuse's track record with any kind of um, controversy uh, on campus, off campus, or like you said, to do with um, Adam Weitzman. And yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, it's terrible. All right, Yuli. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming on. You got thank anything? You. you got anything else? That 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 was mainly my point. But oh, yes, thank oh, you. Well, thank you. It's great insight. And it's very well said. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, buddy. Um, well, that yeah. was here dom's back dom's decided that hey i'm back i'm gonna speak now so go ahead dom dominic you're killing me it's gotta be something on his end yeah it's Look, gotta be oh he's you, muted you're muted now unmute try it again now can talk. you hear me now holy cow dude <laughs> my god man Everybody knows when Dominic's on, when the, when the technology's going awry. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, I, I'm listening to you guys, and it went blank. And all of a sudden, I said, I hit unmute, and I can't hear you, and I can't hear myself. I had my headphones in. You had so you your headphones in. Now, Dom, you yeah, know yeah. that every time you got your headphones in, you're screwing, you're screwing the thing up. All right? I'm, I'm, it, technology is supposed to make your life easier, isn't it? Well, when you reach a certain age too, Dom. No offense, yeah. but but you know, yeah. it's just a little bit harder to it's a little bit harder to operate at a certain point. Yeah. So um what's up, well, man? How have you guys been? Happy fourth. Happy fourth. Happy Independence Thanks, Eve, buddy. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um looking forward to uh I, I'm, look, I got a four day weekend, a rare four day weekend for myself, and I'm pretty good excited for about you. It. Yeah, that's right, that's <laughs> right, that's right. Oh good for you. And how was it? It's gonna be great. Uh, all right, Dom. Back on track, buddy. What you got? Um, yeah, this this whole thing is a PR nightmare for for, for Syracuse. I, I I have a a judge on my route. I was talking to him about it, and um, he's he just said all the stuff that is going to come out in discovery for this from the college that they will legally have to hand over to LaQuint's team, and just it's. Any judge in their right mind, he said, as soon as he looks to see if any other kids were not suspended for, for an on-campus fight, and his whole thing is this. He goes, it is self-defense. So were any other kids not suspended because they claimed self-defense? Whether or not he went to go pick up his buddy from a party where he got into a fight or not, that is, he's like, e- even a private institution, there has to be some sort of, of guilty until proven innocence. It's not a military court or anything else like that. He really thinks that the, the school is in a lot of PR trouble. Do, do and, I, I should have asked Yuli this. Um, do, does every, does every uh, school have these like mock trials for on-campus incidences and things like that? I mean, it's, it's like Dean Warmer in Animal House. Double secret probation. <laughs> Double secret <laughs> probation. Yeah, um, it, it just seems like it just seems like something that shouldn't be allowed to happen. Yeah, I, I I spent two semesters in college. I, I never got in trouble. I don't know. So oh, to be honest, shocking. But, shocking. Right. Right. But um, <laughs> yeah, it is it. The stuff he said. The stuff that is going to get leaked about the university. You, just oh anything. man! You know what? That's what it we need, Joe. To, I'm, I'm yes. sorry, Dom. That's that's what we need. We need a leaker. We've got leakers for yes. everything else these days. Let's get a leaker. No, a whistleblower? Right. A whistleblower. Oh, I mean, I'll take a leaker. A whistleblower's like next level, right? Yeah, plus they go missing. <laughs> yeah, well. Hey, well, here's the thing. You guys met my kid at the Wake Forest game last year. And sure did. And the point that I, that, I, that I made, I called Orange Nation about this. He's 19. He has one buddy of his who I can see mouth off to somebody and get into a fight at a party. If he called my son, who is not a partier, right, and said, David, can you come pick me up? I'm drunk, right, and I'm and, and somebody's starting to fight with me, I would be like, David, go get your friend. Do you know what I'm saying? And then you go and you pick up your buddy, but because you pick him up, oh, you're associated with him, so you get popped in the mouth. I would never expect my son to just sit there and take it from a, from a, from a drunk guy. 
You know what I'm saying? You can't expect that from anyone. And and here's the other thing. And, and here's the, the thing adult, that bothers me. Drunk adult, Dom. Drunk right. adult, yeah. And how about this? What if I have a 17-year-old daughter? What if my daughter goes to Syracuse University, she's in her dorm room, and some guy comes to attack her, and she she attack, she slugs him over the head with, I, I don't know what you could have in your dorm room, a book, a hammer, whatever. Are you now going to suspend her because she got into a quote-unquote fight because she was defending herself from a guy that was attacking her? Mm-hmm. And they, they tried to say, well, that's not the same thing. It is the same thing. It doesn't matter the circumstance. When you are being assaulted, you have the right to protect yourself, and you shouldn't be worried about getting thrown out of the university you're going to, football player or math major, for defending yourself. Well, I find it, it's, it's, it's really ridiculous. I find it um, a little hard to believe. At this day and age, that many kids around and some SU football players galvanting around that there was no cell phone footage of any of this. Right. Does anybody else find that odd? I mean, that seems odd. In this day and age, yeah. Seems odd. So I'll just say that. So maybe that's what we see is we see that Dom's getting gas. Um, no, buddy, maybe, I'm, worried. I'm delivering, delivering packages, <laughs> okay, baby. Okay, all right. So maybe that's what we see. Maybe that's what we see is this cell phone footage leak or someone's got to have something. But anyway, um, I got another one to get to, Dom. I appreciate it, buddy. Hey, see you get guys. That, get that mail soon. out. All right, bud. Yeah, Bye. Nice to see All you, bud. Um, so, I mean, look. I mean, there's got to be something. There's got to be something um, out there. Um, Level Up Luke on Twitter. I'm hey, the, what's up, boys? What's going on, man? Thanks How you doing? Going on, buddy. Good, good. Thanks for doing the space. Uh, I think it's good to actually... You know, talk with some other people about it, and I think Dominic had some really good points there. Um, First time for everything. Yeah, going... <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, Goth Law that I, I had uh, posted that tweet from, he's an attorney, and okay. then, like he said, he used to work in a, uh, a campus um, as a campus liaison or, or whatever. Um, that is something that's at every school, pretty much every school. And they're not necessarily a court. Uh, it's more like a um, arbitration kind of setting. So, like sitting in front of a um, board or something. Yeah, yeah. So they they really do have all the authority in that situation um, because it's a university, right? And it's not even a state university; it's private. So they can do whatever they want within the the bounds of Syracuse University. Gotcha. Um, yeah, they also don't necessarily have uh, uh, all of the scope that the judicial system has. So I think that point about when this actually goes to, to real court and uh, discovery is uh, the, the discovery requests are made. Syracuse has to comply with that. And uh, <laughs> do we know about this attacker? Have they said if he was if he was white or black? They I have thought not. I saw somewhere that he was a not. white kid or a white guy. It wouldn't surprise me um, if that was the case. And I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to get into those waters, but I'm just saying, you know, we 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 kind of suspect that. Right? That's, well, that's we're making, we're making yeah. assumptions. We're making right? an because assumption. It doesn't make any yeah. sense, so we're trying to make it make sense in our heads. So it, I think it, we're right. all on the same it, page as far as that's concerned. And, and is and he thought, connected to someone on this this board or this whatever you want to call it? Um, well, even taking a step back from that, is he is he a legacy student? Um, you know, is he on scholarship? What is a twenty three year old? I yeah. mean, I graduated college at like twenty. Like, what is a twenty three year old doing at a at a campus party? That's just kind of weird. Eighteen year old. Yeah, exactly. Um, but no, I was going to say it really it, it is something we should talk about because going to court um this could actually trigger a a federal lawsuit if they're unfairly targeting a black student for something that they don't uh equally enforce with white students um whether the kid's a legacy or not syracuse is really opening themselves up to liability here unfortunately syracuse is i mean you're right They, they they open themselves up for it yeah. You're right. And I'm, I mean, they 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 have they have been they have had issues in recent past with such things. Yeah. Is that fair to say? And it, and it seems like the public is ninety percent against them on this, 
Um, I, I understand the dynamics here uh, from the outside, at least. It looks like this is academics versus athletics. Um, there's a lot of people on academic staffs at university that have resentment for the athletics programs and the athletes themselves. They feel like they take up a lot of the school's budget. They take a lot of the attention away from the academic focus of the university. So sometimes they want to make an example out of an athlete because they feel mm -hmm. like the athletes get unfair treatment all the time. So, hey, this kid stepped out of line and punched somebody. We better hammer him with the punishment to right. set an example. You know, and they 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 could not be more out of line when the D.A. goes on local sports radio and says <laughs> it's likely no crime was committed here. <laughs> uh, that, that's just wild. Yeah. And, 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 and go ahead. Yeah. The most glaring thing, the number one most glaring thing here is the attacker, the 23 year old. I have not heard anything about him facing any charges for he, throwing two punches yeah. and starting the fight. Well, he first started with Deuce Chestnut, apparently. All right, right. he was at least part of the group that started it with Deuce, and then 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 LeQuint came to his aid or wh whatever, however you want to look at it. But no, it, to this point, I have not read um, that he anyone but LeQuint Allen has gotten any kind of. Um, legal attention for this and, and obviously like so, said, i mean that is something they will have to answer for in court i mean that will come out in this process um if they were smart uh i would you know expect su's general counsel to settle out of court rather than letting this go to to uh mm -hmm. you know a trial yeah that would be the smart thing to do but it seems like they haven't been doing the smart thing so far um, so I don't know why they would start now. They they tend not to do the smart thing, first of all. And second of all, the date was pushed back from the 12th to the 19th. So they got a whole week of um, trying to gather their shit together to get to to figure it out. I think I, I totally agree with you. And that's a great point that I do think that this thing will probably be over sooner than later. And, um, and like I said, that is just incredibly wild that the, the local DA went on sports radio to discuss the incident and came out against the university. That's that's mind blowing. Yeah. And he probably yeah. and he obviously would not have it had had this punishment not been he levied. Made it right. Sound like he, a nothing burger straight he, from the beginning. Right? Multiple people. Did are. Now, take the now, I don't know how uh, how much you guys followed the situation, but last basketball season, there was an incident, tragic incident at the University of Alabama where uh, Brandon Miller, who was just selected second overall in the NBA draft, uh, returned a firearm to a teammate who legally owned it. And then that firearm was used shortly thereafter in a incident which left one person dead. Um, you know, situation aside, and, and uh, you know, without going into the ethics or the law of any of this, the DA came out and said there were no criminal charges the university did not take any action besides suspending him temporarily while the legal system played out. And once he was cleared of charges, they let him play again. Yeah. Yep. So played, that strikes me as similar in, in the in, sense that what's that? I said he was, he played in the NCAA tournament and was the second round, um, overall pick in the NBA draft. Yep. Yep. But I mean, to me, that sounds like a reasonable way to handle this kind of situation. You know, there was a violent incident. Um, the DA cleared him. The police cleared him. So that should be the end of the conversation as far as the university is concerned. Um, and really, I feel like they should commend him for throwing one punch. I mean, he got hit twice. Gave the kid the first one for free. Got hit a second time and then one punch and did not escalate it any further at that point. He only acted in self-defense. And to me, that sounds like a very reasonable response. It, abso um, it absolutely does. And mm -hmm. he, he bloodied his nose. So the, the second hit uh, evidently no, it sounds hit like Quince. he could have done worse, right? If you yeah, wanted he, to. Yeah, Luke's point. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Luke, r r quick question. Do you, do, you sure. think, do you think out of all those people there at that party that there's absolutely no video evidence of this altercation? It's, it's hard to tell. Um, it sounds like this took place outside of the actual party. Um, a lot of times, if it's just the few people, maybe two or three people, 
in the immediate area, uh, the first thought may not be to pull out a cell phone. Um, I, I would absolutely, in the discovery process, in the actual real court, um, if I'm his attorney, I'm, I'm requesting campus to pull security cameras. Um, you know, you want to document uh, every part of the story. And it, it sounds like the police would have already reviewed some of this information and cleared him for it. So the university escalating this to an unreasonable uh, degree. And I think what helps now is with the NIL deals, I'm sure he's making money. And so the university, by suspending him, is impacting his ability to earn revenue. So I would see that as a main avenue that his attorney takes in the court proceedings uh, as part of this injunction uh, or this uh, this motion here. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, Luke. It also keeps him out of school, too. Yeah, it keeps him out of school. Free. That's yeah. that's the well. That's I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know so how, how mean, much of a factor I'm, that would be, but yeah. I'm sure LeQuint would rather. I'm sure he would take no money from any NIL deal to stay in school and play football this year, based upon where well, he is right now. Oh, uh, I was going to say earlier too. Um, I was thinking. Uh, so all of this happened in January, February, as far as the uh, the kangaroo court. Yeah, as far as well, the court as, goes. Yeah. Oh, the court yeah. part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I found it really interesting that he participated heavily in the spring game and was featured prominently in the football team's marketing materials even after this decision was made, before it was publicly known. Huh. Uh, so I think that's the athletic department trying to support him and uh, might kind of tip, tip their hand as far as uh, Where they... them expecting him to play in the, in the fall. Well, let's hope you're right. And, and Luke, a lot of smart... Uh, commentary there. Appreciate it, man. You take care. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks guys. Bye. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of good points. Hey, look, here, something, look, Twitter space is the place to go. I don't think we need the alternative anymore, Joe. I think we're good. Yeah, By I the way, so too. Um, well, look, that, I think, is going to have to do it for us. Um, we really appreciate everybody who turned tuned in on, on Twitter to uh, partake and give us your thoughts. All real good stuff, and we appreciate it. And we'll be back here. Obviously, I think this is where we're going to do fan feedback for football and basketball now. It just seems like an easy way to go. And uh, appreciate everybody for coming out and listening and uh, tuning in to Twitter. We appreciate all of you. And... Uh, that's going to do it for us. Till next time, Bay- Bayham's Army will be next at the end of yes. July. We'll, we'll be back then. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out. Peace.